In this video, we're going to take our stoichiometry a little further. In the last video, we talked about the relationship between the moles of each of the reactants and products based on the stoichiometry, on these balancing coefficients, but we know that when we get into the laboratory, we don't measure moles, we measure grams. So we need a way to relate grams or masses of each of these to each other, and we're going to use the fact that we are very, 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 very familiar with the fact that one mole of X, where X is something from the periodic table, is equal to the number of grams of X using the molar mass from the periodic table. So if I know the relationship between moles of each of these based on the stoichiometry, then I can calculate grams of each of these based on their moles using this, um, using this relationship. So let's look at a typical problem. How might we word a stoichiometry problem? What might we be looking for in the laboratory? All right, here we have a question. How many grams of NH3 can be produced from 10 grams of hydrogen? Um, similar to the last video, notice that nitrogen is not mentioned. Since we don't mention nitrogen, the assumption is that we have plenty of it and we are only concerned with if we're limited to 10 grams of hydrogen, how much ammonia could we produce? I'm a very visual person, so I like to, as I read through this, I like to come up here to my reaction and actually jot my, myself a few notes. I'm looking for grams of ammonia. I'm given 10.0 grams of hydrogen, so I'll put the 10 with the hydrogen and my question mark with the ammonia. So I have a problem. It's a unit conversion problem where I'm literally asking how many grams of ammonia are equal to 10 grams of hydrogen. The problem is, is I don't have a relationship between grams of ammonia and grams of hydrogen, but you may recall I do have a relationship between the moles of ammonia and the moles of hydrogen. The stoichiometry of this reaction is moles to moles. That is going to be my key for almost everything I do in chemistry. So if I can get from grams of hydrogen to moles of hydrogen, then I can relate that hydrogen to ammonia. So my first step is a grams to moles step. You should be very, you should be getting very good at doing grams to moles. I'm converting grams of hydrogen to moles of hydrogen. Notice that I did label it as hydrogen because I have more than one chemical species in this problem. You don't want to get confused as to grams of what and moles of what. Now that I've gone from grams of hydrogen to moles of hydrogen, my next step is to get to ammonia through the mole to mole conversion, just like we saw in the previous video. Moles of hydrogen goes on bottom to cancel, moles of ammonia go on top. The numbers that go in this ratio are the equivalence, it's the equivalence between hydrogen and ammonia in this chemical reaction. Three hydrogens equals two ammonia, and so there, there are the numbers that I put for this conversion. My moles of hydrogen cancel. Notice that my final answer needs to be grams of ammonia. I'm sitting here with moles of ammonia, so I have one more step. Let me squeeze it in there. One mole of ammonia equals 17.04 grams. That's the molar mass from the periodic table. My moles of ammonia cancels, and I'm left with grams of ammonia. So I, my one more step was to go from my moles of ammonia to grams of ammonia. All I have left to do is to punch it in my calculator and round it correctly. It looks like I need three significant figures on this problem, and so my final answer is 56.2 grams of ammonia. We lovingly, in chemistry, refer to these problems as grams to moles, moles to moles, moles to grams. This is one of those things that you'll hear first year chemistry student muttering under the breath as they walk down the hallway if I'm given grams of one thing in a chemical reaction and I'm asked to find grams of a second thing in a chemical reaction, this involves three unit conversion steps, grams to moles, moles to moles, moles to grams. The grams to moles is of the given chemical species. The moles to moles is to convert to my question mark guy. And the moles to grams is to find grams of my question mark guy now that I know moles of them. And all stoichiometry problems that are presented in this fashion. You're asking for grams of one thing, given the grams of a second thing, follow these same steps. And so practice, practice, practice. Just a little bit about the vocabulary. 
Um, the way the question is worded is going to change depending on what's given and what's asked for. In this case, we want to know how many grams can be produced because we were asking about a product. We were saying that it was produced from a certain amount because we were given a reactant. If you're asking about a reactant given a product, the words you're going to use are going to be slightly different, but the bottom line will be given one grams, how many grams of a second guy do, do, you, do you need, do you have, do you get, and it's grams to moles, moles to moles, moles to grams. We might refer to a product as a yield. We talk about using the word yield when we, when we say the arrow for a chemical reaction. And so we have the term theoretical yield, which may show up. If you're ever asked about the theoretical yield, that literally means how many grams of product do you get? So I could have phrased this question, what's the theoretical yield if you have 10 grams of hydrogen? It's assumed that my theoretical yield is talking about my product. I only have one product here, and so I'm asking for how many grams of ammonia do I get? If there's more than one product, a theoretical yield question, a question that uses the, the term theoretical yield, would need to specify which product it was talking about. So a theoretical yield is asking about grams of product. The default is grams. There are, you may run into some cases where, where the phrasing is, what's the theoretical yield in moles? In which case you don't need to go on to grams. You can just stop your calculation once you find the number of moles. Also, sometimes this question will start with a certain number of moles. That means you get to skip the first step. You don't have to do the grams to moles conversion if you're starting with the moles. If it's asking you to find the answer in moles, you get to stop at moles. You don't have to go on and do moles to grams. So this is a stoichiometry problem, and you need to practice them.